Hi once again. Um, I've been away a while, I've uh, been working really hard and so apologies for not doing a blog for a while. Um, it's a Sunday evening and in England and dark so apologies for the lighting if it comes out a bit a uh, bit dodgy it's because uh, I'm not going by daylight today. So um, <clears throat> yeah, uh, what I thought I'd do today is uh, go off track a little bit and not um, specifically talk about nutrition, not talk about stress or lifestyle habits as such for uh, for a while. Um, what I'm going to talk about today is the foot. So um, there's a there's a new debate going on. It's been going on now probably for more well, the last sort of two or three years. Um, it's it's got a uh, gathered a bit of pace, and that debate is um, whether we should be barefoot or whether we should be wearing shoes. Uh, a lot of the debate's been focused more around running. Um, but obviously it carries over into just uh, general lifestyle as well. So what I'm going to do today is um, I'm going to talk about the foot and this debate and where I stand on it. And I'm going to go through a little bit of the basic anatomy of the foot um, as I think that's important um, to understanding the argument that's going on. I'm also going to um, uh, talk a little bit about um, the reasons behind the research and, and who's been studied and who's done the studies and, and so on. And um, and then a little bit about the options that there are out there, and uh, hopefully come to a bit of a conclusion. So uh, to begin with, we're going to start uh, with the foot. Uh, we've got the foot here. As you'll see, lots of bones in the foot. Um, people don't really think too much about it. Uh, in fact, if I if I show you this one, foot goes at the the bottom of the the leg, uh, lower leg here, inside of the the foot here, big toe. Um, outside of the foot and there we've got the bones on top again. So if we break it down uh, in simple terms we've got the tarsals here which are this big clump of bones here. We've got the metatarsals here which are the, the sort of footballers injury that you hear a lot about broken metatarsals and then you've got the phalanges or the phalanxes at the end uh, which are your toes and as you can see the toes are made up by more than one bone. Now the way the foot normally works, um, as with any stretch, a bit like your hand as well, is where you've got these bones in the inside, in the middle, and where you've got the bones here, there's lots of ligaments in between those bones, and you've also got the tendons and the muscles that come down and work into the foot. And when we put pressure on the foot, it should basically give. It should be allowed to, to move and absorb the pressure uh, when, when we run or when we walk. Um, What's happened is um, uh, a lot of people have been studying a lot of tribes in, um, uh, in places like Kenya and in, I think South America as well. And they've been looking on slow motion cameras at the way in which someone runs when they're barefoot as opposed to when they're wearing a shoe. And obviously we've been told for years that uh, running shoes are really important, that we have to have a good quality shoe and that, that that's important to avoid injury. Now actually, uh, the arguments out there that's not the case because more and more foot injuries are happening. Um, uh, a lot of podiatrists uh, are coming across foot injuries, a lot of doctors, there's lots of refer referrals. And I can say actually in my, my clinic, uh, referral of foot problems has definitely gone up and it's something that I treat quite a lot of. Um, I work alongside a podiatrist and he's definitely realised that through um, talking to me that there's a definite overlap where we can um, refer and counter refer to each other. So I have people where occasionally I do think that orthotics, which are an insert, can be made to uh, change the positioning of the foot and stop strain happening. And likewise, he gets people who come in for those uh, kinds of devices, but actually realizes that it's probably nothing to do with the structure of the foot and that they need to come to someone like myself and have a tendonitis calm down, or um, have some, some work done to calm down a ligament strain or work on the, the actual position of the foot. Because uh, when a common injury that, that I see, for instance, as an osteopath, is if you look on the inside of the arch of the foot, this should be held up. And if you look at your own foot, that area should be held up. Uh, there's a ligament under here, and there's, ligament, uh, and there's tendons that come down here and go underneath. And in a healthy foot, that arch stays up. Now one of the most common things that people talk about, um, which is going to be the best one to show you, um, is that they say they've got a dropped arch. So that inside arch has come down. Now that I'm seeing more and more of um, and people often think that that is their problem. 
Now, when you actually break that down, a lot of the issues with dropped arches, or this is actually called pronation of the foot when it drops in, a lot of those issues are actually more related to poor core function. So then when we get on to some point of talking about uh, core function, the abdominal muscles around your, your lower tummy, the internal ones, the ones that are deep in, actually help support your whole frame. So when you've got a weak core, quite often this causes, and, and going with that, you normally have weak uh, muscles around the hips. What actually happens is your knees bend, uh, sort of drop in and as they drop in, that weight transference is actually transmitted onto your feet. So instead of your feet being arched, they actually flatten out because your weight is transmitted onto the inside of the foot. So these ligaments under here and the tendons here get stretched. And what happens is over time, your weight pushes and pushes and pushes and that gets weaker and weaker and weaker. This is where the barefoot debate comes in because what they've tended to show is um, for a lot of those problems, um, you often be told to get uh, an arch raise, you know, a running shoe or a shoe with an arch raise, or you'll be made orthotics to lift that part up. But uh, um, as mentioned in um, this book actually here, Born to Run, um, fantastic book all about barefoot running. Um, a lot of mechanics, and I might be wrong here because it's not my field, but a lot of mechanics and engineers would say that if you have a bridge and you have an arch on that bridge, the last thing you want to do is support underneath that bridge because what it actually does is create weakness under the foot or under the bridge. And so over time that bridge will become weaker and weaker and that the foot is the same thing. A lot of the foot's um, function is geared towards having a good strong arch. Um, what, if you then take that into account with the human body, when we run and when we move, blood is pumped around the body, all the nutrition gets around the body. But more importantly, the connective tissues, the tendons, the ligaments are strengthened by movement. If you move a, a, a ligament, if you move a tendon, if you stress it, in time the body responds by getting stronger. Now, from a very simple perspective, and this is the way I like to think about it, if you've got that foot in a shoe, quite often that shoe is too tight, or too, uh, not usually too big, but occasionally too big, but normally too tight, you get crowding in that foot. You get a crowding of the bones. The bones aren't allowed to move. Now, if you don't allow those bones to, to move, those ligaments to move, over time, what's going to happen? It's going to get weaker. You're going to become more prone to injury. And especially then if you go out and sort of go for a long walk over rocky ground and you've got a foot that's not used to it, yes, it might be in a shoe, but it's going to get weaker and weaker and weaker. If you then go out and try and run, for instance, loads of impact in the foot, incorrect function in the foot, a common sense argument to say it's probably going to lead to injury. Um, I personally don't run that much anymore. I used to run uh, a lot. And... Uh, a lot of, the, as I say, a lot of the arguments for this debate between going barefoot and not is based around running. Now, it's actually kind of hard trying to fit the foot into 15 minutes, but I'll see what I can do. Um, when we run, and we run barefoot, we actually strike on the front of the foot first. So as we place the foot down, we'll strike there, and then the heel comes down, and then we take off again. When we wear a trainer, we come down like this and push off. Now, that's a twofold problem, according to research by a chap called Professor, Professor Lieberman, who works at Harvard University. He's one of the leading lights who's studied a lot of this, and I'll try and attach his video, basic video, explaining what he does. He has shown that when the human body runs effectively and runs by placing the front foot down and then getting a mechanism that pulls on the, allows the calf to function properly, there's much less impact on the foot as a whole and transmitted up through the ankle, knee and hip, so therefore avoiding injury or avoid creating less injury. If we, it's called shod run, so if the foot comes down like that heel first and then goes through, there's a lot more force that hits the base of the, the heel. And when we get that force, that's when you're gonna to start to get compensation. That's when you're gonna to start to get issues maybe with the knee, issues with the heel. Um, issues up as far as the hip and the low back. Um, now I can say for myself, obviously as I used to run, um, that when I used to do distance running, um, I definitely used to get tweaks in my lower back. Um, that was that was 100% cert. 
Um, and I would probably need massage and things to ease that out. Um, I did have... Ex